So this is yet another case of egregious behavior by police in Boston, this, or Massachusetts. This is a Quincy detective who resigned, and this is this is an older story, so you might be familiar with it, but this was reported in April by NBC10 Boston. Basically, he has resigned, um, but he was catfishing a mentally, um, a mentally disabled young lady. Not sure exactly what her age was, but she was in school. She could have been of the consenting age, but nonetheless, he was sending unwelcomed. He was catfishing. He was engaging in sexting with friends, although he claimed it was consensual. He sent messages using alias accounts, <clears throat> catfishing, and it was just pretty, pretty egregious. And so you have the state, once again, who doesn't get involved. Nobody prosecutes this guy for misuse of his power. Nobody takes actions against him. Not the police department. Uh, you had to get the news to get this investigation going. I think somebody new came on board, but he decides to resign. Okay? But it's just the fact that, you know, that that's pretty much not holding accountability of officers when they're doing egregious, abusive, perverted things to women. And in light of the things that have been shared by this trooper proctor, um, he's trying to use his excuse of being angry at Karen Reed for, you know, he, he admits his behavior was juvenile and unprofessional, but yet he's not been held accountable. In fact, because one of his, his egregious text messaging and horrible, abusive, insultive uh, conversations and, and sexist and ha sexually harassing as well, um, conversations, and not only that, but sharing medical information with other people, that's HIPAA violation, but um, the, his supervisor was also engaged in that, and nobody from the states hold them accountable, of course that was the state, so what are you going to do? Nobody's holding them accountable, so, but thankfully, at least on this case, he does resign, so it's, it is a pattern. Okay, and I'm sure the Massachusetts is not the only state, but I don't know if anybody heard about this particular case, but I think it should be kind of kept in mind when you see something like Proctor and the way that he behaved, and that it's not like just, oh, that's just like a one-person fluke, like nobody else acts like that, and when you see, if you see and look at this report that they did, and just how egregious this case is, and the fact that nobody held him accountable. No disciplinary action, nothing. They're like, the DA didn't prosecute, oh, it was a consenting adult. Okay, well, actually, it was not a consenting adult because she was mentally disabled and she's in, like, a, a special school and, you know, I don't know if that person has, like, a power of attorney because a lot of times, even though they have mental disability, it doesn't mean that they're not allowed to have, like, romantic relationships, but sometimes they are under protective guardianships. And so it doesn't really reveal that unless you go into further detail. But the other things that he was doing besides, you know, obviously taking advantage of her with his position and telling her to do very specific graphic things and to delete it. But he was also catfishing people. Like, you just, you just have to read the port. It's, it's, it, there's no reason why he didn't face, at the very least, disciplinary action. And he didn't. He you know, did resign. So there's that.